I was wondering if you could maybe teach me a little physics. A little physics? <laughs> There's no such thing. Physics encompasses the entire universe, from quantum particles to supernovas, from spinning electrons to spinning galaxies. So... <laughs> There's a really nice sequel to that, but I don't have time to, 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 to play it. It's one of my favorite shows. Um, we're going to do a little physics. And I, I, unlike Sheldon, I'm not going to start with the Greeks and, and do the 2,600 years. Um, but I do want to start with a question. Why should you care? Why, why worry about physics? Is it... Why is it important to us? Well, OK, here's the first answer. <laughs> so if you want to make a good angry birds, then you have to know about the differential equations that govern the way birds fly. That's mechanics, which is what we're studying. Very, very realistic simulation there. One of the things Sheldon mentioned was things going round. Uh, this is a picture uh, aimed at the pole star uh, long time lapse. If you want to know how the Earth behaves, why the heavens do as they do, that is a study of physics. And it wasn't easy. It's still not easy. In our experience, the natural state of things is at rest. And so, as the Greeks understood, it takes an actor, a living object, to inspire motion in an inanimate object like a book. The natural state for the book, because it's heavy, is down. And it will move down until it can no further because the things underneath it are heavier. That is Aristotelian physics. And deep inside of us, we understand that. That's the way we look at the world. It's wrong, but it's very useful, particularly when you're running away from animals in the savanna. So evolutionarily, we have a computer inside that allows us to predict how things are going to move. And the real laws are more interesting and comp uh, complicated than our computer is. And so it can be a challenge for us to understand. It seems until the earthquake happens, and we had one recently, I I'm sorry you missed it, um, <laughs> that the earth is still. And the other stuff is moving around. But it was Newton who explained how the motion of the heavens and the motion of objects on the Earth can be unified with a set of three laws deceptively simple. And those laws have allowed us to get pictures like this, which is a picture of um, G. I probably don't have to tell you. Anybody? Pluto. <laughs> OK. Can you catch? Good. So this is Saturn, and that's the sun. So it's, it's like an eclipse of the sun. So this is from the far side of Saturn looking through the rings. Not it's just amazing to me that we can send stuff out there. And the way they track the satellites and figure out where they are, obviously they're taking um, radio information, little signals that come from the satellite, but they have to keep calculating where is the satellite going to be. They use Newtonian mechanics to make those calculations. Corrected a bit with general relativity, but it's, it's primarily a Newtonian framework. I don't know if you have noticed, but we have a problem with energy. Um, we use a lot of it, and we like it very a lot, because it makes our lives comfy and convenient. Um, but it has, the way we've been getting it has some serious consequences for our world, which we will talk about 
at some length in this course. Um, I teach a course from time to time called Energy in the Environment. This is from a field trip. We went out to uh, the wind farm near Palm Springs. And wind energy is one potential source of renewable energy. And that has a lot to do with mechanics because the, the goal of extracting power from the wind as it goes by means you've got to figure out how to design your wind turbine, how closely to space them, and so on. This is from, this is another approach uh, at um, eSolar, which is an installation um, out in uh, Lancaster, so around the back of the mountains in the high desert. Um, and the, uh, the mirrors here redirect a whole bunch of the sun's lights up to uh, a boiler up at the top. This is the Grand Coulee Dam up in Washington. Anybody been there? Is it as impressive as it looks? <laughs> nah, she says nah. So the Grand Coulee Dam generates a whole bunch of hydroelectric power. That's one way to get renewable energy. Um, and to build that might require a little bit of an understanding of the laws of mechanics. This one I just love. Anyone know? Whoops. What happened? Oh, yeah. Anyone know where that is? That's the Three Gorges Dam in China, the largest dam in the world. So just a little bit of a trickle spilling out underneath. <laughs> kind of impressive. Anyone been there? Where is it? It is somewhere in the southwest. That is correct. <laughs> I don't think that deserves cho well, all right. <laughs> it's Hoover Dam. And at this point, the, the bypass bridge has been completed. But this is when they're constructing an amazing bypass bridge uh, above the dam. Anybody know who this is? Elon Musk. Why should we? Who's Elon Musk? SpaceX, Tesla, and PayPal. <laughs> PayPal, Tesla Motors, SpaceX, SpaceX Hyperloop. <laughs> He's sort of a serial entrepreneur kind of guy. This is what he says. Study physics and learn how to reason from first principles rather than reason by analogy. Something like quantum physics is not very intuitive. I would argue neither is mechanics. And in order to make progress, physics essentially evolved a framework of thinking that was very effective for coming to correct answers that are not obvious. And in order to do this, it requires quite a lot of mental exertion. One cannot conduct one's everyday life reasoning from first principles. It would just require too much mental energy. So I think you have to operate most of your life with reasoning by analogy, or essentially copying other people with minor variations. But if you are trying to break new ground and be really innovative, that's where you have to apply first principle thinking and try to identify the most fundamental truths in any particular arena, and you reason up from there. That's what we're here to do. That's our job, is to try to develop in you the ability to reason up from base principles. And it seems to be working for him.